for y'all to come in, man. I got I got something real good for y'all, man. Your boy Big Boosie. Y'all know what I do, man. I'll be right back, man. Wait for y'all to pile up in here, man. I got something real serious. Got something real serious for y'all, man. It's been crazy out here, so I want to, you know, I want to say one thing. Um, I got a special guest on the line, and uh, I want to make this one thing clear: Street Knowledge Podcast is not for bringing people down. Y'all might have seen me in the past, go at a few people here and there, you know. If they disrespecting my friends or try to disrespect me, whatever, then, you know, I'm going to have to defend myself. That's just how we grew up, defending ourselves and defending our friends. And not that they can't stand up for themselves. I'm going to always stand up for my friends that can stand up for themselves. If they can't stand up for themselves, then I won't. I mind my business. But other than that, this is not a podcast for that. This is a podcast to, uh, like Jaguar Wright, she said that Jay-Z had Big L killed. I wasn't going at her. I was just correcting her with some things that she probably just thought or she just probably had the wrong information. That's about it. So we just here to correct people with certain things. So I just want to get that clear. So I got a guest on the line. His name is Marcus Welby. AKA Marcus Welby. And you know, right now we just doing this one over the phone. Y'all get to see who he is later and all that. We just scratching the surface with a few things and uh um Hold on, I got everybody hit me up right now. But uh we just gonna scratch the surface with a few things. So I got, you know, the mystery man. That's what he's known for. The mystery man, Marcus Welby. So y'all know his name is in paperwork. It's in the newspapers. Everything about the, you know, the puff thing. Um. And uh, I want to let y'all know. This is not throwing no punches or no shade at, you know, the female, um, Natasha, Natanya Rubin. This is not throwing no punches at her. You know, we just want to straighten the record with certain things. Because, first of all, we, we are not nowhere near thinking about, uh, backing anybody that is in domestic violence. That means man or woman. If a woman beating on a man, we don't, we're not with that. You don't get no props for that, even though you're a woman. That's not good. We're not with a man beating on a woman. That's not good. But what we are about is truth being told so that another person don't get blamed for something that never really happened. So that's what this conversation is totally about or about to be about <laughs> however y'all want to put it what up i see y'all coming in what's good no doubt happy sunday yep you already know what it is yep peace all right all right no doubt yeah we always gonna keep it real right here on street knowledge that's what we do Big facts, big facts. Yeah, I see you, I see you. All right, so I'm gonna get to the point, man. It's your boy, Big Boosie. I got the mystery man on the on, on the phone right now. Marcus Welby, what's good? What's good, bro? Yo, 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 what's good, what's good, Boots? Man, everything good, man. So, I've been, uh, you know, I've been listening to, uh, to a lot of, you know, a lot of things with the female, the, 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 what's her name, Natanya Rubin. 
And she's also known as what? Ebony? Uh, Ebony. Ebony. She's also known as Ebony. And, you know, um, I've been listening to some of her things where she was saying that Puff shot her. So I've been hearing through the grapevine that Sean was the one that was doing the shooting. I was hearing that through a whole bunch of other people. And, and for her to say that Puff shot her is like, is, is buck wild to me. So now that today Tisa tells, which I'm a big fan of Tisa, Tisa tells she does her homework. She's great at what she does and everything. And you know, she let the lady do more speaking and she did more listening, even though she, you know, she speak her mind as well. And I love her platform, but the lady was saying that Puff pulled out his gun as well. Because I was kind of confused at, at the beginning of it. I kind of want to let some of it play real quick. Hold on real quick, bro. Hold on. Let me let some of it play. And this is under fair use. This is under fair use, YouTube. I'm going to let some of this play real quick, but not a lot. I don't want to get paid from her content. Y'all make sure y'all go to Tisa Tell and watch the whole thing. But I'm going to let some of it play, and then me and the mystery man going to get into a few uh, 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 other things after this. But this is just something real quick. True. Why can't you tell that? Like, I mean, the notion that people are always like, how can you be sure? Um, the same way for sure of every major thing, every major cataclysmic event in our life. To be fair, you were completely sober. Completely Again, I don't. You were completely sober. Your back was shine and puffy. Hey, both, of them, both of them okay. backing back. Now, shine was closest to the bar. He was on the side where Julius Jones was, closest to the bar. Puffy was on the other side. So if it's me facing the doorway where they were backing back towards the door, shine would have been on my right and puffy would have been on my left. Okay. People do this whole thing. So the club is dim, but it's not dim where you can't see. We all can. How do people mate with people that they meet at the club? Like you can see somebody look good. And mm. then the least of which is in a sea of people wearing party attire, this dude is dressed in white. Of course, I, I watched that black gun, gun come out. It was such a contrast. You could not not see it. Diddy was dressed in all white. Yes, so people okay. are trying to this whole, how can you be sure? How do you know? It was a club. It was like, come on. We see everything else in the club. So, you know, she said Diddy had on all white. She seen the black gun come up out of Diddy's waist or whatever. And she said, people were saying, how could you be sure we in the club? She said, come on, we see everything else in the club. My years of experience of going to clubs, if somebody pulled guns or I hear about gun, I'm getting low. I'm looking around. I'm going crazy. I'm ducking. Like, I'm not focusing on no gun. And even if I see him pull a gun now, I'm definitely know where it's at. So I'm getting away from it. I'm not watching and waiting for them to shoot. That's my theory. Now, if you're a person that look at a person, they pull a gun, and you stand there and wait for them to shoot and all that stuff, I don't know. No disrespect to her. Probably that might have been one of the reasons why she might have got shot. And I wish that didn't happen to her. So y'all don't take this the wrong way. But all my time, I ain't never uh, sat around and I never seen anybody sit around and kind of watch who was pulling what once they seen it pull. Or should I say, once it's pulled, sit and watch what they're going to do with it. Should I say that? But... So I got the mystery man up here, man. What's good, mystery man? Can you can you break it down to us? All right. What right, happened? This is, what happened? this is what happened. All right, we was in the club. I mean, before before we got in the club, we out front. So you got a lot. You got a line to the right of the club. You know where people that stand on lines. That's where they at. Right. And then you got the people on the left side of the club. I mean, the left side in front of the club, and that's the people that don't wait on the lines. So but there was so many people there that day that had clout that it was real crowded, so everybody just wasn't getting in like you would usually get in. Right. So 
I noticed Black Rob standing there on the line with the people. So I knew Black Rob because Star actually used to hold Puff down before all of this. And oh. everybody doesn't know this. Okay. But Hold up. I don't want to cut you off. Let me let me let me hold up real quick. Hold that thought right there. Let 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 my audience know first of all who you was with on the pull up at this at the beginning of your right, coming. When we pulled up, who was you was with? Deep. We we was deep, you know what I'm saying? We from Brooklyn. You was so with who? Back then, huh? Who was you with though? The main people. So pe these people, my people will understand who you was with. So they'll understand. Oh, oh, um, I was there with Scar. I was with Scar. And um, when we got in the club, that's when I ran in the box. Right. From Albany Projects, and that's Julius Jones. I grew up down the block from Albany. Right. Okay, cool. So now they understand who you was with. Okay, now, break it down. You seen Black Rob. My bad. I ain't want to cut you off. No, no, no. It's all good. Yeah, so, um, so Black Rob was standing on the line, right? Right. So we standing out there, and um, like I said, Scar introduced me to Black Rob and numerous bad boy artists and they bodyguards and all that because um, Scar used to go out of town with them to hold um, Puff down back in the days. Right. Before all of this happened, that's when um, Puff had the Black 600 and Scar had the White 500. I'm talking about like the square one, like 50 Cent had in that movie, um, Get Rich or Die Trying. Right. And um, so our, um, our big homie is Don Poole. You right. know what I mean? I remember so Don Poole. Don Poole, he was Biggie role manager. He went to Howard with um, Puff. Right. So that's the connection right there. Right. You know what I mean? Fact. So, um, so, uh, all right, so boom, so then Puff pull up. I think he pulled up like in a limo or a Lincoln Town car. Right. So as he start coming in, and then he had a little entourage with him, maybe about like 10 people, maybe 14 people. So they walked right past Black Rob, and Black Rob was like, yo, Puff! What? Yo, Get out of here, dog. <laughs> so I thought that was strange to me. I said, damn, man, they didn't even hear him like call him. Yeah, away. that's like, that's very strange. Yeah, it was weird to me, yo, because like, and it, it, you know what was weird to me? To see Black Rob even standing on the lawn. Yeah, that's crazy. That Nobody, to nobody's going to believe this when they hear this, man. Black yeah, Rob was yeah, on yeah. the line. I ain't, got, I ain't got no reason to lie. I ain't on this shit for no clout. You know what I mean? I got Fact. no reason to lie. Fact. It's just I'm tired of hearing all the lies. You know what I mean? So Facts. I said, you know, let me come out and tell my story. Facts. So we finally get in the club, and um, we buying bottles of champagne. Now, I mean, oh, before we even got there, we was already drunk. We was already drunk before we even got there. You know what I mean? Our night started off at um, 802 Washington in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, we drinking mad champagne, honey. So we already fucked up. We ran all the lights to go there. Because that's what we used to do back then. We used to just run mad lights. Because that was before the, uh, the, the, the cameras and all of that. So that was just the thing to do. So, you know, we pulling up in Range Rovers, Navigators. My Navigator was in the DuPont Registry, just to let y'all know how we was doing it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And um, so, you know, we in there, so we in there, whatever. So I see my man Box, Julius Jones. So we just chilling, whatever. We all drinking champagne, whatever. We got bottles, though. We not drinking out of glasses, because, you know, back then, that was the thing to do. You, you drink out of a bottle. That was like a status symbol. You like, you know what I mean? So we having a beautiful night. It was a beautiful night because you would never know who you see in Club New York. You know, you could see anybody in there. Any right. celebrity, any athlete. It was definitely the, the place you wanted to be. And it was the last party of Club New York. So as the night went on, it's me, my man Pooch from Kingston Ave in Brooklyn. It's Box. It's uh, Star. And we chilling by the bar. Right. So we see Puff. We see Puff coming with J Lo. J Lo had on like a nice, like a like a like a beige fur, some jeans, 
a wife. I don't know if it was a wife beater. It might have been a wife beater. I think she had some jewelry on. But she was looking beautiful, yo. She was definitely Jenny from the block. No doubt. That night. Big so shout out to Jenny. Puff is looking, is um, is looking at us, and um, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe he remember me from back in the days because I remember when Puff used to dance, and one of my homies used to dance too, um, in this group called IOU. So you know what I mean? I met Puff back then or whatever. So I'm like, damn. But when he come over to us, he start talking to Pooch, you know. So it's a conversation going on. It wasn't no just a random bump or anything like that. <laughs> so so Puff is talking to Pooch, having a conversation like, yo, what's going on with such and such, whatever. So at this time, we had a record label at the time, too. Right. So I'm thinking, I'm like, damn, I'm like, damn, this is a good, this is a good way to start the new year off, like, about to meet Puff, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So out of nowhere, so, so mind you, this is what people don't know about Star. Star was like a bad drinker, like, you know, when he would drink, and mind you, I already told you, we was already drunk when we got there. Right. And it's just like, when Scar would get drunk, he definitely would start a fight with somebody or fuck somebody up. Right. And he's just, he just known for this. Right. You know what I mean? He just known for this. Mm-hmm. So, it, that night, it just happened to be Puff. It wasn't about, it wasn't about, um... Like, who had the most money or anything like that. Right. You know, I'm sure we all know people that can't um, handle their liquor. Yeah, that's a fact. So, Scar was like, you know, Scar would do that. Like, he'll, he'll definitely get crazy if he got that honey in him, you know? Mm-hmm. And he was already drunk. Like, we drank so many bottles. So, you got to blame that night on liquor. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> blame it on the alcohol. <laughs> Yo, I'm just giving your listeners the real, yo. No like, doubt. I've been hearing all these fucking conspiracy theories for years, man. Right. Nah, blame it on the Hennessy, yo. Right. You know what I mean? So, as Puff is talking to Pooch, all of a sudden, Star just elbows him in the chest. And when I say elbows him, he elbowed him so hard that Puff fell back maybe like six feet into his bodyguard. His bodyguard was probably about seven feet. At this point, like, where, we, where like was a, y'all like, at? Like a wrestler, like a WWF wrestler. Where was y'all you know? at? at the, huh? Where y'all was at? In the club at this point? Yeah, 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 yeah. We in the club. We bought a bar. Okay. And it was stairs to go down to the dance floor. So we like at the that corner of the, blo- uh, of the bar right. to go down to the dance floor. Okay. So... So when we standing there, nah, started, I mean, um, Puff didn't um, knock his drink over or anything like Because, like I told you, we drank out of bottles of champagne. We didn't drink out of glasses. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we was kind of ignorant back then. So, no you doubt. know, you would figure if somebody, they, they, I know this is stupid to say, but we was like, if somebody drinking out of a cup or a glass, that's some broke shit. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> even though, even though, like, you know what I mean? I don't think that today, but, you know, back then, you know, you'd be thinking all type of dumb shit. And Definitely. that was one of the dumb shits we would think of. So right. we would always buy bottles and shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So he didn't knock the drink out of his hand. Um, Puff didn't do nothing. Puff did nothing wrong. But he just came over to show us love, to be real with you. And he just didn't know he was running into a, a drunk star. And it was kind of weird to me because Star always talked good about Puff. Right. You know what I mean? He always would talk about how much fun they would have and all that shit, whatever. Right. And shit. So it was kind of weird to me when it happened. But mind you, I'm drunk, so all this shit happened in slow motion to me, for real. Right. So when he elbowed Puff so hard and, and Puff fell back, when Puff fell back, Puff said, yo, what's that for, playboy? And I thought to myself, I said, damn, he really talk like that? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you be hearing him say the playboy shit yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And then Scar's response was, man, fuck you. Fuck you, nigga. So in my mind, I'm bugging him like, fuck all this aggression coming from, like, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> like, like, like we came in, you know, to, 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 to get the bitches or whatever. I mean, right. Farm, you know what I mean? Right. To, 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 get, to get with the women or whatever, you know what I mean? Got you. And, um, and so it was kind of crazy to me. But, you know, when we grew up in the hood, it's like you support your man right or wrong. And then, you know, then you check him later. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Right. So, so when that happened, then Wolf came up. So when Wolf came up and he stood right in front of um, Scar. So in my mind, I said, damn, let me step in front of Scar because I know he'll hook off on Wolf and I know we'll be fighting in there. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, no so doubt. So I knew, I knew who Wolf was because, you know, when you outside, you just, you know, you, you, you're pretty knowledgeable who, who people are. Yeah, the who's who. So, 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 yeah. so, I know, so I know Son of Go too. Because everybody knew that was like tough muscle or or that's what we thought anyway. Like, you know what I mean? That's right. what streets thought or whatever. So um, I said, damn, let me step in front of Scar because I got all this jewelry on. We all had on jewelry. Like, we all used to go to Jacob the Jeweler, you know what I mean? Right. So we all was iced out, you know, Rollies and Spencer chains and shit like that. So, and, and I, didn't come, I didn't come out for that. Like, cause I never partied. I never party, you know what I mean? Right. So it's like, and I always heard the stories later on what Scar did to somebody. Right. But I never, ever, ever experienced that until we go out that night and he chose Puff to do this shit with. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, so what happened? All right, so boom, so now... I'm standing face to face with Wolf, right? Mm-hmm. So I got a money, I got money in one hand, I got the bottle of champagne in another hand. Right. And so I'm just like, yo, just go ahead, just go ahead, like, you know what I mean? Just go ahead, like, you know, just trying to, just trying to tell Bad Boy Dad, get Puff and J Lo up out of here, like, you know what I'm saying? But they all just standing there silent, like they not beefing back and they not scared. You know what I mean? But they just, it was like some ego shit. Just Standing their ground. Type. And they not really trying to get their principal out the building. They more just standing there. But I don't know if they realize it or not. Like, we got all of Brooklyn behind us. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Because me, I grew up in East New York, Brownsville, Flatwoods, Crown Heights. I grew up all over Brooklyn. So I, so I know an assortment of everybody. Right. You know? And... That was but that was what was behind us, everybody. Yeah. And when you got money, when you growing up in the hood, you know, like people that do anything for you. Yeah. You know, so I knew it could be real dangerous for them. You know. Right. And at that time, I just thought to myself, I said, Nah, I said, Yo, these are successful people, and they from the hood too. So you know what I mean? Let's try to get them out of there because we ain't come here for that. Like you know what I mean? Right. So, but nobody is getting them out of there. So Puff is jumping up, and you can see him, like, you can see his head coming over his bodyguard's shoulder. Like, you see his face come up saying, fuck you. Now he's saying, fuck you back, the star. You know what I mean? Like, over over, was, over the bodyguard. Man. Like, his man was so big that he had to jump up <laughs> to say, fuck you, but then you wouldn't see him no more. You know what I mean? So, so by this time, Sean come up. So when Sean come up, you know, he starts trying to talk to Scar. Right. And, and we all basically had a relationship with him, too. Because Scar's little brother and his peoples used to be with Sean. Right. Matter of fact, we seen Sean probably about maybe like two weeks before that in his Range Rover in Brooklyn. And when we pulled up next to him, he jumped on to the um to the oncoming traffic side. And right. then the, and we, then we had the little bros in the back and they like, yo son, yo, yo son, yo son, or whatever. So when he saw it was them, it was like he kinda like put his guard back down. But I don't know why he was like so nervous or whatever, like, you know what I mean? Cause he used to have he used to have him at Diddy Crib with him. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um so it was a little relationship there, too. Right. You know, it wasn't like everybody was strangers. Right. You know, and even before that, maybe about a month or two before that, 
one of them came to me and said, Scott, um, Sean was looking for a gun. And I said, that, I said, I said, yo, do not get Sean no gun. Right. You know what I mean? I said, yo, he got a bright future in hip hop. And you know what I mean? And you know, that could be good for us too, because we mess around to get him for like, we could probably book him for cheap, for shows, after parties. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You was thinking of the long haul. You know what I mean? Right. So I said, yo, don't get him no gun. But you know what? Somebody got him a gun. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that's, that's a week we before. Are. Anything. Well, that's how close we are to this situation. You know what I mean? Right. And then I didn't know at the time, but you know, um, even the dude Manny, Manny Haley, that um that uh Natanya uh mentioned in her interview how she mentioned him, that was our man too. Right. You know what I mean? Manny Haley was our man too. We all had hair salons. You know what I mean? Me and Scott, we had a hair salon on Fulton Street called Hype Images. And uh, Pooh that I told you about, he had a um, hair salon on Washington, and Manny Haley had a hair salon in Flatbush. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's like we all was associated. But at that time, I didn't know that Manny was his manager. Mm. Right? So um, so when um, Sean is there, he's like, yo, these are my peoples, whatever, whatever. So mind you, I told you, Scar drunk. So, so, so he's like, yo, fuck you, nigga. You know what it is. You get back to the hood. You know what I mean? But nothing would have ever happened to Sean because of the relationships there. Right. You know, like, you know, Scar was just drunk. Right. You know what I mean? That's all it was. He was just drunk. So, um, a little while after that, I just threw the money in the air. I didn't smack Puff with no money. You know what I mean? It right. was nothing like that. Mind you, I just told you, Scar, I mean, Puff is like six feet away from us, standing behind his um security, his bodyguard, right. and then Wolf is standing right in front of me. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. So I just threw the bread in the air. Right. It was about five, like eight, nine grand and hundreds. Mm -hmm. So that's why when people are saying, or in the, even in the news articles, they said the money is coming down. Right. Like, how could the money be coming down if Puff got smacked with the money? Right. It, it wouldn't happen like that. Right. You know what I mean? When you throw the money in the air, then the money would just disperse, and that's when it come floating down like snow or rain. So, Natanya... That was, something that, that was something that we used to do, too. We used to throw money. You right. know what I mean? So, Natanya, to, Natanya was that. saying that the money that, that the, one of the guys... Smack Puff with the money, and then she was saying that the money was in the air and just went everywhere, and people was picking it up. So, right, so, so it's no way that nobody smacked Puff. Nobody. Right. The only, the only, the only altercation was the elbow to Puff chest. It right. was no fight. It was no. It was no fighting. It was just a. It was just start, and everybody just talking shit. To the bad boy dudes, and the, they was basically silent, and Puff was just beefing. Right. You know what I mean? Because, you know, he there with J-Lo. He got to say something, like, you know what I mean? Right. He ain't want to look with soft. J-Lo. You, you better say something. Right. You know what I mean? He ain't want to look soft. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, so when I threw the bread, I thought, I thought you know, niggas would have been like, oh, like, you know what I mean? Like, start laughing or, or something, like, you know what I mean? But, nah. Nah, it was like the music stopped. And it was like the whole crowd said, oh. But now people are grabbing the money, but it's like they not putting the money in their pockets. They grabbing the money and they throwing it at the bad boy dudes. What? You know what I mean? And that's what I said, damn, maybe that wasn't a good idea. What? <laughs> wow. Right. So, right. so the, the notorious rumor that Puff got the money thrown in his face nah, and that was been, that but it's been a rumor to throw money. but you, you I but mean, but, but what I'm hearing news people say this and media people and right you know what I mean, you know what I mean? But, you know how long I've heard this story right and I just was like man like you know what I mean I'm just not a, a pro like I come from a time where we used to break cameras you know what I mean oh oh shit they taking a picture 
You know what I mean? We used to break cameras, but now it's the new shit. They taking pictures and right. And all so that shit, whatever. I don't like. I don't come from that. So, so that's why I never really came out and, and and told this shit. Like you know what I mean? I got you. So, like, so my like, my like, point you know, though. We into this shit, boom. So I said, you know what? Let me let me just say this shit. So my point is the rumor that money was thrown in Puff face was actually a lie because you know why because you are the guy that threw the money but it wasn't in puff face it was in the air in the air it was in the air exactly and that's what created the whole shooting after that right so so once everybody's throwing the money and I, you know and it was the crowd the crowd roared like it felt like the floor shook when everybody said oh Right. And after that, that's when I that's when I seen Sean shooting. You know what I mean? So And the only and the only reason I'ma say that is because is because he already been convicted of it or whatever, whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Cause we don't you know what I mean? We don't, right. we don't condone we don't condone snitching. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. But right, no doubt. Everybody yeah, knows. So that's the only reason I'ma say that. But yeah, so when he starts shooting, I don't know if y'all ever seen Players Club with Ice Cube, right? Mm -hmm. I never seen Players Club with Ice Cube when Ice Cube was shooting in the strip club. That's how Sherman was shooting, yo. <laughs> that's why. That's why it's bullet holes in the ceiling. That's why it's bullet holes. Because if he wanted to shoot us, we was all just standing within like a three feet radius. Right. You know right. what I mean? So, so where where do Puff come in at that he pulled the gun with his white from his white? suit that he was wearing, his white outfit. That nah, Puff, Puff definitely didn't start shooting because as soon as the shooting started, now, now, that's when they start down, that's when they get him and J-Lo, and now that's when they all rushing out the, out the club. And that's how Sean got caught with the with the gun running out the club with the, with his, with the gun in his hand. Right. So I've been hearing all these John Wick stories, right. all these rappers saluting Son and all of that shit. And you was like, front you know and center. I mean? Like for real, Son was really a good kid. And right. it's nothing wrong with being a good kid. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's the honest truth. You know what I mean? Like right. when he was shooting that gun, it was like that gun was shooting itself and Son was just holding it. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. Like even if you was like you see you could see his face. You know what I mean? He was like shocked. It was like he was shocked that he was even doing it. He was I guess he in his mind he was protecting his wanna say at the time, his boss, his label. Nah, it was nothing to protect him from. His label owner. There was nothing to protect him from. Because it wasn't no fight. The only thing I could think of is the money being thrown and all of that. Maybe he felt the way behind that. I don't know if he was drinking. You know what I mean? I would love to know the truth. So Natanya saying she's mad at the lady for lying, saying that she fell on Puff. And she know Puff didn't have a gun because she fell on Puff, on top of Puff. And she's saying nah, that... Puff definitely wasn't shooting. Right. Puff J-Lo, J-Lo, J-Lo was definitely not shooting either, man. Right. The only thing she was doing was hurting hearts. Right, right. Man, she was just hurting hearts, because you know how them, them uptown Dominican women, or Puerto Rican women be looking. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Puerto Rican and, and Dominican. That's when she was J-Lo, so... Puerto Rican, Dominican, good, black women, they all B.A.D., man. All B.A.D., right, right, man. Right, 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 All right. B.A.D. Yeah, and had, had, we had, grew had up at. Women back then. That's a fact. I know you know you from Harlem. That's a fact. Where we grew up at, yeah, all, yeah, our yeah, black we, women, we Dominican women, women time, Puerto Rican women, women boy, women, they, they all used to put, put that wear on, man, and look good. Fantastic. Fast. So, Fast. you know... I'm glad that, you know, you speaking out about it. And I know you got a lot more to tell, a lot more to talk about, rather. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot, a a lot, lot, of, a lot, lot more to talk man. about. And we're going to save we gonna save a lot of the juicy parts for, for you know, part two and all that. And, and, and I just wanted to clarify a few things because there's still a lot of the things that need to be clarified from what. You know, uh, Nat what's her name? Natanya, Natanya Ruben is speaking about. 
And and I just wanted the, this part to be said right now because I'm gonna dissect a lot of the other things that was said and 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 let you speak your part, my brother, because like I said. We don't condone nobody beating on no woman, hurting kids, old people, nothing. But we also don't condone nobody lying on another man and tear him down and sending him to jail unjustfully. Send him to jail. One thing I like, one thing I like what he said. What's that? Because Sean said before that he used to send Scar on missions. And anybody know that bro... Bro would never be going on no missions for no son because son was a kid. <laughs> he was a kid. He just let that hip hop money go to his head. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like, <laughs> right. like anybody know, like, that right there would never happen. It never happened. Cause, right. Because bro, bro was a big dog. You know what I mean? Right. Right. No doubt. And she, that big respect for her for that part saying you know that uh no, that's real. shine ain't sent him on a mission because people are looking shine because he's a at he's the celebrity at that time big big rap figure that he could send goons somewhere to do certain things which they don't understand the goons really run things behind the scene and they don't regulate the goons the goons exactly. regulate the rappers and then, and then oh let me say this too right right if Sean, if Sean was shooting, I mean, I mean, Sean was protecting somebody. What was Wolf doing? Right. That's another like, thing. Like I'm Wolf, glad like, you like said Wolf, that. Wolf was the was the pit bull, right? Like facts. You know what I mean? Facts. Facts. Like the, from the stories I hear about Wolf. Well, like yeah, Wolf nothing, that, that nothing, nothing to play you with. Know what I mean? From the valley, right? Nothing to play with. That's a fact. Yeah, and, and, the, and the valley got its own reputation. Yeah, nothing to play with. And if it was if if it was like a real threat, Wolf would have definitely reacted, definitely to help and save Puff at that time. If it was something that was crazy, but if he seen Shine had it under control, that was his t that was his cue to move. It was his time to, to to get up out of there. So ain't nothing that he could do. So that's those are some of the reasons why I know a lot of the story wasn't making sense, and I didn't understand it until I really talked to you. And you broke it all down to me. Now it makes sense. Because I'm like, well, why would Puff be shooting when Wolf was right there with him? Wolf and, was always and, and, the and, one that and, holds it down for Puff. And, yeah. and, and Wolf was on the front line. Right. Wolf, 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 Wolf was up front while everybody else was more to the to the back. It was like that, that, that five feet, that six feet back. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Wolf was right there with us. Right. So... Yeah, so I'm I'm glad you clarified that for my audience. A lot of other people probably gonna be calling you in a minute, so you might as well get ready and get and and you could go ahead and give them the full everything. How the police came to your house looking for you. How the police came looking for Scar, wanting him to testify. All of the above. We'll save all that for yeah, you came, know. They came to D.C. They came to North Carolina. This, yo, it's a crazy story. Right. It's a crazy story. Right. And 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 that and that's deep. So I also wanna correct the the Natanya Rubin lady on some of the city college stuff that she was saying about Puff. And I also did something uh a piece on that. I even went inside of the City College building where it happened at. For y'all that's new to my page, y'all can go up there. And check it out. Make sure y'all subscribe. Hit the like button. Make sure y'all share this. Share all my content that y'all watch. And hit the like button. I'm going to keep coming to y'all with all this good content. But I also took y'all inside of City College. Where it all happened. I was right there in the middle of people passing out in the little corridor. And it has nothing to do with Puff booking or should I say overselling tickets has nothing to do with overselling tickets has nothing to do with the gym was capacity to uh, fill to capacity. The gym had no people inside of there, just a little bit of people inside of there sitting on the bleachers waiting for 
the people to get inside, which never happened. They never got inside because of the commotion that happened upstairs before the event was even able to take place. I'm going to let y'all hear something real quick, what she said, man. Something real quick about the city college situation. This thing ain't going, you ain't going. My <laughs> sister was livid. Went in my room, knocked everything off my bookshelf. She was livid because something would not let me walk out that door. And we had planned. I mean, had our outfits and everything. Saying she was and planning at the last minute, I was to like, go I don't think to we should go. And the she city was college. And I promise basketball you, after event, we heard that the puff start rolling in, she just looked at me and was like, and, and, you know, there were no words to be exchanged. You probably <laughs> saved her life. For those of you guys that don't know, with, why don't you tell people what happened at City College? Here we go. So City College was a basketball tournament that was supposed to be like a, a celebrity basketball tournament or something. And they were supposed to be doing some sort of fundraiser for the narrative changes. It was some heavy sort of D, And then uh, it was oversold, grossly oversold. As See, she said grossly oversold. What is grossly oversold? I don't even understand that type of language grossly oversold that sounds good but at the end of the day if tickets are oversold right once you get to the venue and you try to give them a ticket and it's oversold what they going to do to you at the front door they're going to tell you it's oversold you can't get in you have to go back to the ticket office and get your money back that's it that doesn't create confusion for people to get killed and trampled on. That's not how that type of thing would happen. But I'm going to let her finish. And so when they had already reached capacity, I, it's my understanding the day of the event and the day before. Her understanding. She wasn't even there, but her understanding. This is what she heard. But you can't speak about stuff like that if you was not there. But I'm, I'm, we listening. Before he still was advertising it, even though it had already been sold out. Which caused a bunch and more she, people to... And she said that after it was over, over sold, he still was advertising. He can't stop the advertisement. Once you pay a radio for advertisement, it's paid already. So they're going to keep advertising and advertising. Nobody never stops advertising anyway. They wanted to keep advertising and advertising. Because sometimes some people that want to go, like herself, that she that didn't go, even people that bought tickets, Mike didn't even make it and have a ticket. I done been I done had three, four tickets and didn't even go to a, a, a event. And I couldn't even give it away. I probably called people up and asked them if they want to buy them, they ain't buy them. So I'm I'm not there. So if there's room left, then it gives the person that is doing the party, even the promoter might not even be at the front door. It's to whoever at the front door discretion to let the people in because there's more room. Because people didn't show up that paid for tickets. So that don't mean just because he was over advertised. That's not a such thing as over advertising. Once you pay for advertisement, the advertisement just keep rolling until the money runs out for what you paid for. So, you know, when people use words like that, such as what she using, it makes the story sound more effective and make it sound more harsh, which it's not true. That's not how it happened. But we'll finish listening to her. Arrived and then there became, you know how situations happen, a bum rush. Mm -hmm. And it was just so weird. Uh, so many people got injured and so many people died. So nine people died, but it was really 10 because the rapper fought. So what really happened was, and I spoke with Gene Dill about this. I, I was on the bloody, the bloody clubhouse thing. And I let it, I, you know, I, and, cause Gene speaks about it a lot about this city college situation. And um, I was outside. And I was in the line waiting and it was a comfortable line and they had the blue barricades. You know those blue barricades they have, uh, Mystery Man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. AKA R 
Let me rephrase that too. It's the mystery man, aka R too, also, sir. But R, so you know the blue uh, barricades the police have, like parades and all that, right? Yeah. So they had a they had the blue barricades up. All the way in, you know, in the line. They didn't have them far back. So, as people was walking up to the line, they was just coming. You know, it, once it's near the time to be there, people just start coming from everywhere. So, they was coming. It was a nice, peaceful walking up, walking up, and walking up. So, it was two police. It was a man. It was a man police, a male police, and a female police standing in front of the line. When I talked with Gene about it, he said, yeah, because he said his, he had his security uh, ready to handle everything on the outside for Puff, but Puff didn't want to pay. So I took it as they didn't get, you know, come outside to handle the line like security supposed to be out there and control the line. You have to control the line at any club. I, I've owned three clubs in my lifetime, and I always make sure that the line is controlled in front of that club. That line did have nobody out there. Um, Gene asked me, did I see the FOIs outside? He asked me this on the, on the Bloody Bunch clubhouse um, thing. And I'm trying to remember. I don't remember seeing if they was across the street. They probably didn't do nothing because they didn't get paid by Puff at the time. But still, my thing is this. It's police officers right there. That override any security. Any security. If they see people acting rowdy while they walking up and walking up, and when you get to that door, you got to go in through one door, which box you in a corridor, and then it's another door where they were sitting there to collect the money. So once you get inside that corridor, you stuck inside of there. But things was flowing smoothly, flowing smoothly, smoothly. So as people walking up, me and my boy, his name is Hot Rod. Can't forget it. I'm going to get him up here, too, if I have to speak about this again. We was walking. We was getting, we was getting in, we getting in. We get in the middle of it. Now they was, before. no, before we get inside, people was get, uh, walking up, walking up. People start pushing and pushing. They didn't have nobody controlling the crowd. So people got ignorant and thought it was a joke and it was funny and laughing and pushing and pushing and the security and the, and the barricades fell and the police was like, man, they threw their hands up, man, I'm out of here. The male police, the man said, man, let's go. We out. And the lady walked off with that, with that police. He didn't call for backup to come assist him, to help him or nothing. That's what he should have done. Wow. That's what he should have done. Because at the end of the day, the, 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 the police should be held accountable also. Not just Puff, not just City College. Because the police was paid to be out there as well. So if you are paid to be out there, you're supposed to make an audible. Make another, you know, a, a, a quick judgment. When the people was pushing like that. And it was just, just two officers? Two officers standing right there That's in the crazy. front while it was... When you go in through the in through one door, you in the corridor, then you go in another door and the table right there where you give them your ticket or you pay your money to go in. So it was nobody in there. So when the police, when the police walked off, it was like, man, we out of here, man. They like basically they acted too rowdy. We out. They didn't even care. And and the doors was closed, right? No, the front door to get in was still open. The, so, so, the doors? so now buses, so now the door to get in, the first door was open and people was pushing, pushing. I'm like, damn, y'all not going to get in no faster by pushing. But it turned into like it was a game to do it. And everybody pushing. So now me and my boy easing, we get in the middle of it. And now we stuck because they closed that the door to get inside where the table was at to get the tickets. They closed the door. And now people were stuck in that corridor and it started getting hot in there, hot in there. And people sometimes, you know, when you're in a small space, some people get anxiety thinking you can't breathe. It was girls passing out, passing out. And we banging, open the door, open the doors. People in here passed out. We got to let them through. So 
we picking people up off the ground and and they finally open the door again. Some people could squeeze and go in, but we had to pick them up. And and you know when they do that wave when people jump off the stage and people carry them on the wave, what they call that, the marsh pit. We had to carry them through like a marsh pit and bring the people through, bring the people through. And then I'm easing up, I'm elbowing people. Get off me, get off, don't grab on me, don't grab on me. Me and my boy, I'm pulling my boy, yo. So we finally ease up and get in, right? We 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 pop through, we get we get in. It's still people in that corridor, and they still was other people was helping push people in that was passing out. So they so I go in, go downstairs. This how I know it's not crowded inside. Once I get inside of there, nobody's really in there. There's people there sitting on the bleachers, everybody talking, the DJ playing music. People playing basketball, uh, you know, shooting the ball around a little bit. But they waiting for the crowd to get inside, pack, to pack the stadium. The, 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 you know, the arena, whatever, the gym. So nobody was inside of there yet. So we walking around. Next thing I know, I see the whole crowd all the way on the steps where you come down. If you go, if y'all go on my page, on my, on my, uh, on my uh channel y'all to see where i showed the gym where the steps loop around and it was a crowd a mob of people because they finally opened the door to let people through they realized that that corridor was uh having making people pass out from not being able to breathe so when they opened the gym when they opened it they came all the way downstairs to the bottom of that uh, to the bottom of the gym, people still couldn't get through. They were still passing people through the gym part. They like they got stuck on the steps, bro. And then it was people laid out on the ground, laid out. People was getting ice, rubbing ice on people's chest, trying to revive them. Some people was giving mouth to mouth resuscitation, trying to revive people. Some girls was in there dead, covered up with beautiful outfits on. They was covered up. You could see they held. They didn't cover. They didn't have the sheets enough to carry, to cover them up where you could see their, still see their shoes. Women with the beautiful shoes and all that was covered up dead, bro. In there on that ground. That sounds crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. But it was not due to what, um, Puff did, I want to say. Maybe if he would have, if he would have um, hired the security, like Gene Deal was asking him to for the front, that wouldn't have happened. That's one thing. But what I can say, the police was there, and that shouldn't have never ever happened if the police is there. Y'all get paid. Y'all get paid tax dollars. Why would y'all leave and deny? Yeah, but they definitely needed more than two officers. Yeah, and they should have got on their walkie-talkie and called for backup, and they didn't. That would have covered all of that. That would have covered all of that. So, you know, once again, Natanya Rubin just didn't know what it really was. So she just going off of things that she might have heard. So not to, to make her look bad i'm just letting her know what really happened because i was right there in the middle of it and a lot of that wasn't diddy fault sometimes people do make mistakes with judgment when they doing business but that don't make it of uh uh their fatal mistake especially when the police was there so even though you didn't hire five securities you hired two and two that was important was police so that should have been enough to cover him so that shouldn't have never ever happened you feel what i'm saying like nah, it's a definitely. it's a it's a backup plan plan a didn't work but plan b saved me damn if plan b wasn't there i'd have been messed up plan b was there and left that's crazy. They left, and they are the most significant thing that could have saved them people that day. And they should be held accountable for that. And I told the families that, um, that uh, you know, the victims of the family that suffered 
their loved one dying, they need to look into which officers was there. It was a woman and a, and a, and a man. Look into it. And they probably don't want to dig it up now, but it's still dug up because we still hearing about it right now. So I'm sure it still hurt them. And if it still hurt them, they need to dig it up, pay a private investigator to find out who those officers was and make the city pay for that, man. Because it wasn't just Puff fault for that. At all. So... We can't make him look like he a monster on that note. Can't make him look like he a monster on that note. Now, other things that he done for his, to himself on video and all that, he got to pay for that. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, he got to pay for that part. I'm not defending none of that because I got daughters. And anybody put their hands on my daughters, I'm going to the grave. Period. Straight like that. So, but also what I'm saying is... He ain't kill nobody. He's somebody that need to be rehabilitated as a human being. We can't be mad at a person, but for so long, but he has to pay for what he done. But he, he has to be rehabilitated to know that you don't hit on a woman. So maybe one day he can go and teach classes and say, I, I was crazy for ever, ever doing that. I was at the top of my life. And I'm all the way back down here. And I don't want to see y'all young kids or I don't want to see y'all grown men that's beating on women do that. Because people like him is going to be examples for other human beings in life that go through that. So it ain't but so long that we're going to be able to beat him down for what he's doing because everybody get a chance to be forgiven if that makes sense. But he nah, got to pay. Right. Yeah, nah, you right. That's a fact. Because it's like when you're doing wrong and they send you to jail. When you went and did your, you did your time, now you come out, you, you are forgiven for your time that you did. Even if you killed somebody, some of the family members always say, I forgive you for that. You was young, you was stupid, you was this, that, that. And some people forgive people. So he deserved the same thing. But for right now, he's going to have to pay in the, in the hot water still and the light still on him. But we only speaking about things that he shouldn't be uh, accountable for that really is not real reality, that he really didn't do that. And it's another thing. It gives women out here power to accuse men of stuff that they didn't do and tear their careers down. And have people looking at them crazy and then it's hard to fight back. And I'm saying men that never even beat on women and did certain things. It's women that make up stuff on real legitimate respectful men out here and tarnish their names. And they don't get no backlash from it. They don't get no time for lying. Even when you dial a 911 call and it's not the truth, you go to jail for that. So women should go to jail for making up stuff on people. Is my yeah, point. Both ways. That's a fact. So that's all. That's the only thing I'm saying with what we talking about right now. So, but that's the city college situation, and I got the mystery man all right here, Marcus Welby, and he got a lot more things to bring to the forefront. Of yeah, it's, it's like the incident happened that night, but a whole lot of incidents happened within the year before the trial and even after it. Right. We talking drugs, we talking all type of all type of things happen. All type of things. Shootings. Right. All type of things happen. Right. Right. All, all the way to the police coming trying to, you know, make him go downtown when Scar was uh supposed to go, you know, go in and he was hiding and and, and looking so so you got the inside information on a lot of that stuff, and a lot of that stuff it need to be heard out here. So you know yeah, we gonna even, save all even that. The, um, even even the, the hit, the, the hit could be true too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah the, might have some information on that too. Allegedly, the hit on uh on um on who? Which which hit? On, on Scar. Oh yeah, the hit on Scar. Facts. The hit on Scar. The hit on the Natanya Rubin. Oh, now nah, I don't know nothing about that one. 
Well, I'm just saying that's what she was speaking about. But, yeah, 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 fact, fact, fact. But the one that you know about is with yeah. Scar. Oh, yeah, nah, yeah. The, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the hit it's on deep. Scar. That's very deep. That's very deep. We're going to save all that one, man. We're going to save they, all that one. Get it. It could have been a payoff. Right. Mm. So, you know, it's going to, it's going to, it's this, this one here going to get juicy, man. Because a lot of people oh, yeah. out there with false accusations. Oh, yeah, it's, a it's a movie. I got the man right here that was standing right there that threw the money in the air. It wasn't thrown at Puff Face. Y'all listening to yeah, him right now. Nobody, Nobody smack, smack puff or nothing. So we yeah, already starting off puff. with the truth. So y'all want to hear the rest of this truth? Y'all getting ready to hear it. Y'all stay tuned, man. We about to make it happen. I appreciate you all. For real. You already know. I appreciate you too. Nah, we, we, we got things to do, man. You know, you and, know and, and, and that's a that's a fact. And we do this, we do these things here to 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 speak real, real. Grown man, grown woman talk, real grown man, grown woman conversation. And we don't we don't like when we hear people, you know, stretch the truth. And that's yeah, it. Yeah, and we and we and we not here to bash nobody. We just right. we just doing a little correcting, that's all. Just a little yeah, correcting. That's it. And that's what all street knowledge is about. So that's what it is. Your boy Big Boosie, y'all. I'm gonna see y'all in a minute, man. Y'all stay tuned. We not finished, man. Y'all think this was something, boy. I ain't even get to the juicy parts with, with my bro. Oh, man. Y'all stay tuned, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Next time, have your popcorn. Yeah, that's a fact. 